Now that we've talked about what it means for a graph to be connected, it's easy to see there are many examples where a graph can be somehow more connected than other graphs. For example, you can imagine that I have a graph and I can remove some vertices and it will still be connected. In some sense, that graph is more robustly connected. And the technical term for this is k-connectivity. So formally, um, a graph is k-connected if, um, if I take that graph and I subtract out some subset of vertices and it's still connected. So g minus s is connected um, for any, uh, I should be careful about my words here, for all subsets s of vg such that uh, the size of s is at most or is less than k, strictly less than k. This is really important. So if I remove fewer than k vertices, it's still connected. That's what it means to be k-connected. In some ways, another way to think of it is that in order to break it into more than one connected component, I'm going to have to remove at least k vertices. Now, this is a direct generalization of what we've called connectivity before. Um, you'll see that you know, if I just set k equal to 1, um, there's only one subset of vertices of size less than one. That's the empty set. And it's really just saying that the graph is connected. Um, and so, so again, the idea here is that we're kind of adding robustness to connectivity. Now, um, we've seen some examples of graphs uh, that are not just connected, but k-connected for different values of k. All right, let's see. Um, maybe the simplest example, the most maybe canonical example of a two-connected graph would be a cycle. So if I have a cycle, removing any one vertex leaves me with a path. If I have, a, say, it has an n-vertex cycle, and we remove one vertex, and let's call that vertex v, Right, so we have Cn minus V, no matter what it is, this graph is isomorphic to just a path of uh, n over two, n minus two edges, right? Because when we took that cycle, so here's our vertex V, and whatever else is in here, when we remove this one vertex, we get a path from uh, this neighbor of V here all the way to this other neighbor of V, and we remove two edges. And remember that with the paths, we use this convention that the subscript is the number of edges. So we had n edges and we lost two, that is we lost the two edges incident to v. Okay, and since, um, since this is connected and we saw that connectivity is an invariant, so it's preserved under isomorphism, we know that no matter what single vertex we remove, we're gonna end up with a connected graph. Okay. So that would be a, kind of our first example of showing that a particular graph is two connected. So here's another good example to work through. If uh, Let's just look up here first. If G is a two-connected graph, and if we split one edge to form the new graph H, then H is going to also be two-connected. All right, so in pictures here, right, we had some edge somewhere in G, and we stuck a new vertex right in the middle. And so um, this breaks this one edge into a path of length two here, and the claim is that the graph will still be two-connected. So really what we're trying to show is we take any two vertices in the vertex set of H, right, in this new graph, and we want to show that they're still connected after we remove any one vertex S. So removing any one vertex should leave a connected graph. So we want to show that H minus S is connected. All right, so I wrote in, in the first case here, right, so if S is different from this one vertex here, then there was a path from A to B in G, I'm sorry, between, uh, from U to W in G, and if that path used the edge AB, I should really go this way, if it used the path AB to get from U to W, then we're going to re replace it with a slightly longer path from A to V star to B. Okay, and vice versa as well. So we can kind of, as long as we didn't remove this one vertex, then we can update the path. If, on the other hand, the vertex we removed was exactly this one vertex, then we can consider a particular path 
from a vertex. Let's just pick one, just take a vertex here. Let's call it C. And it's the, the path from C to A in the graph G minus B. So let's be careful on why this actually exists. First of all, B has to have at least one other neighbor because if it didn't, then I could remove these two, um, I could remove a and B would be an isolated vertex, which is not possible because G is too connected. So I know that B has at least one other neighbor. And if I remove B, G is still connected. So there's still a path from A to C. Now that path does not use the edge AB because the vertex B is not in G minus B. So I know that there's some other path that avoids this edge AB. And so any, would any path that was gonna use A to B let's say to C can be replaced now with whatever this path from A to C was. Okay, so we're gonna replace that path um, A, B, C in the graph G, or the subpath, if you like, this bit of a path in G with the new path. Uh, I should give this thing a name. Um, can we call it P? Right, so we just replace it with P. And so that gives us a new path by sort of doing a little, little bit of surgery, cutting out this little bit of a path and, and gluing in a new one. All right, so it shows that no matter what S we remove, whatever vertex we remove from this new graph H, we still have a path between every pair of vertices. And so it's still too connected. We actually use a fact about k-connected graphs implicitly in that last exercise, but we can write it down explicitly and I'm gonna write it here as a lemma. So, um, it has to do with the degrees of the vertices. You see, one easy way to separate out the graph into more than one piece or to get, is to get one vertex to be isolated, in which case you would remove all of its neighbors, okay? And so you know if a graph only had, say, a vertex of degree one, then it's, if its one neighbor gets removed, it becomes an isolated vertex and... Um, and um, and then it's not connected anymore. Okay, so um, it has to be the case then that if G is K connected, then the minimum overall vertices in the graph of the degree of V is greater than or equal to K. Okay, and so the proof of this fact is also pretty straightforward. It's just, let's just do it by contradiction. Okay, so suppose not. Then, some vertex, let's call it V. So some vertex V has a degree that's small, right? It has a degree of V, it has to be then less than K. And so you let S, our separator, be equal to the neighbors of V, right? All the vertices adjacent to V. And it must be the case because of the degree here that the size of S is less than K. However, by the definition of K connected, removing a subset of size less than k should leave a connected graph. So that means that g minus s is connected. However, there are no paths from v to any other vertices. All right, so, so we get a contradiction. There's another clause here in the definition of k-connectivity that sort of gets left out sometimes when we talk a little too quickly. And that is that actually you can imagine one case where this seems to go wrong possibly is that if, if S was somehow all the other vertices in the graph. And for this reason, we usually require for k-connectivity, and maybe I'll just add it in here um, back in our definition, is that the number of vertices has to be at least k plus one, or strictly greater than k. Okay, so you need to have, you need to have enough vertices to be k-connected, and then the definition makes sense. Here's another claim I'm gonna make, is that if G is a two-connected graph, then every edge is part of a cycle. And this is gonna lead us towards an important idea, really the main idea, that we're going to use again and again for k connectivity later in the course. And so let's try to draw a picture of this. 
let's say I have this edge AB. Now if it's too connected, it kind of, it's easy to kind of believe that somehow there should be some other path from A to B. We know from the last lemma we proved that the degree of B has to be at least 2. So B has some other neighbor, C. And we know that G minus B is connected. And so there is a path from A to C that doesn't go through B. And this path, if we call it a path P, P combined with the edges, this other path, let's just write it as a path like this, A to B to C, let's say I guess P goes in this direction, then this together is a cycle. The goal was to show that every edge is part of a cycle, so we pick an arbitrary edge, and we show that for every edge we pick, we can always find a cycle that contains that edge. Okay, it's a nice idea. There's a slightly more general version of this, which, um, oh, I guess we'll wait till next time to do, but let me just, let's think a little bit more about what a graph that's not too connected looks like. What does it have, have to have to not be too connected? Well, by definition, if it's not too connected, it means that there is a subset of size less than 2 which will disconnect the graph. So either the graph ha has more than one connected component to begin with, or it's got at least one vertex that, when removed, breaks the graph into multiple pieces. Now, those pieces themselves could be very highly connected. Right? I could have something um, very dense and highly connected attached to that vertex, but the removal of this vertex, if this is our separator, we call that usually S, right? I could end up with these two different components, usually we call these A and B, and so this is called a cut vertex. So a graph that's not too connected has a cut vertex, a single vertex that can, can by its removal, leave us with two uh, disconnected graphs.